let's build a conscript. Not just any conscript, mind you. A conscript in a con world using con tools. This is a Haji Flumberbus. We can rename it later. This is a fictional tool used by our con world's population that I just now made up. Let me show you its features. Four Haji Flumberbi are cut from a single square dowel diagonally twice with a ragmataji, also known as a jeweler saw, and also just made up, to remove as little material as possible. These square dowels are approximately, like, really small, like half a centimeter, and may vary wildly based on the size of text a writer is attempting to produce. Because of the way the Haji Flumberbi are produced, they can either be used continuously with some maintenance, or can be made disposable. They can be made of any material, be it wood, metal, stone, or plastic, with ease. The length and size of the tip of these Haji Flumberbi can be changed to suit any writer. We would assume, in a primitive form of our con culture, people of higher class would use Haji Flumberbi made of stone. This may be sounding weird to you. As you brilliant people may have already figured out, this was intentional. There's already a language, even in our past, here on Earth. That would, of course, be Sumerian and Babylonian cuneiform. Cuneiform means wedge-shaped, and that is exactly what our tool is. And that is exactly what our script is going to look like. Using a unique tool to write our conscript limits our options. We are just going to refer to this tool as a stylus from now on, because that is what it is. Now, if we simply gain our influence from cuneiform, we aren't thinking for ourselves. We want to retain our originality for now. So we aren't going to press our conling into clay, or carve it into stone. We are going to do this the hard way. We're going to use ink. In order for our stylus to use ink, we need to give it some sort of reservoir. While adding bristles to the front of this thing would work to hold ink in, it would do a terrible job of stamping clean edges onto paper. A simple way we can create a reservoir into our stylus is to cut many thin, deep slits into the flat tip. This will hold our ink and then expel some of the ink when it presses into a flat surface. The surface tension of the ink, as well as the aquaphilic properties of our paper, will pull our ink into a cohesive stamp, and should minimize splotching. With our stylus now retaining ink, let us now stamp some words onto paper. With strokes, this tool can produce. Well, there aren't many. You can stamp a triangle, you can draw a line. Now drawing a line gives us a lot of options, too many in fact. So we're going to stick only to straight lines we can produce that are short, and triangles. This is a precise art. Our con culture wants crisp lines for reading, and to ease reproduction of writing through traditional methods. So what can we do with these two strokes? A lot, actually. We can combine shapes. And because of the shape of the stylus, we can discern the hypotenuse from the legs. Now, this allows us to rotate our triangle in many different directions, while still being legible. Sticking to eight sides of rotation should be manageable. This alone is perfectly fine. But we can stick straight lines in there to give us some creative variety. Here is the list of possible strokes. Here is some things we could do with them. Now. We have all of this writing here, but it doesn't really say anything. So we need to have a conling to write this in. We are going to cheat. Okay, um, here's my conling. It has all the same words, meanings, and grammatical structure of English. However, it is limited to only using these sounds. We are going to call this conling English. So, how are we going to write each of these sounds? The simplest way will be to fit each of these sounds in a combination of symbols, called a phonetic script. 
This immediately gives our conscript a few problems. First, we need to avoid potential hash collisions. Morse code has this problem. This is the Morse code for E, R, and F. Here is an extreme example. You see that Ferris and Eradigi, it's just used a word there, they share the same Morse code. And there are a lot of combinations like this. Creating them isn't that difficult. Now, rotational orientation of our conscript's strokes does reduce the number of potential collisions. However, it still has the potential to develop into a problem. Word separation, because of the way the words are written, as a continuous set of letters with no white space in between them, we are going to need to do our best to provide white space between words. My stylistic preference here, to ease the creative process, and have more control over the directionality of the connecting characters, is to write them vertically. If I make strings of text too long, they can bleed into other adjacent lines, get a little too cramped, take up too much of the page base, seeing as you cannot just write smaller because of the fixed size of the stylus. So what are our other options? Well, we could make a logographic script. Unlike a phonetic script that writes sounds a word makes, a logographic script writes a symbol that correlates to a known word and pronunciation. Logographic languages have three primary disadvantages for this conscript. One, while pretty, it would require making an easily distinguishable and unique logograph for every word or conceivable meaning. Remember, you would also need to fit this into a limited space because of the fixed size of the stylus. You could make taller, longer logographs because of the vertical writing system, however. Two, you cannot sound out a logography. If you are reading a logography and you do not know the meaning of a logograph that you are exposed to, you may have little clues to go on as to the meaning of the word, and may have to rely on context or ask another person the meaning of such a logograph. One of the many ways the Chinese and Japanese languages prevented the uneducated from learning the language entirely for much of its history, and primarily why Hangul, the script of the Korean language, is now written phonetically. 3. Sumerian and Babylonian cuneiform is already partially a logography. Other alternatives include a script that uses consonant vowel pairs to write combinations of symbols, called an abugita. A list of symbols correlating to each syllable a language uses, called a syllabiary. Or a script that removes vowels entirely, called an abja. Looking at all of the options, the simplest of the methods for me to do for the purpose of making this video is a phonetic alphabet. Here is my phonetic alphabet. Here is what it will look like being used. Hopefully, you can see each sound as it is produced. I will give you a bit of a pause if you want to read it. That is all there is in creating a conscript. Easy, right? Now, if you like this video, just fucking kidding. What, you thought we were done? Oh, hell no. Take a look at the video length. This is going to be a complete conscript. I plan to be thorough with pronunciation and demarcation. I don't know about you, but I, uh, this all looked a little boring to me. White space separating words, even more white space separating sentences, even more so white space separating paragraphs, even more, even more so for section breaks and page breaks. Maybe some symbols for commas or something. Boring. You know what I like? Information density. Nothing pleases me more than to see a conscript be everything it can be beautiful, simple, and direct, while keeping away from feature creep or so-called kitchen sink conlangs. Now that I am working on this conscript for myself, time to get creative. I want to encapsulate everything. Words, pauses, sentences, questions, exclamations, paragraph breaks, section breaks, page breaks. Now we have these tools that are constructed of 45, 45, 90 triangles. We can use triangles to help keep with the theme. I want to use these triangles for pauses and hard breaks. We can use hard lines to separate lines of text. This even helps us with the design of lined paper. Altogether, I came up with this. Even after all of this, a full conscript is not complete. 
we are still missing demarcation for abbreviations, units of measurement, all the symbols and operators of mathematics and science, you know? All of the important things. And, you see, I have one more little trick up my sleeve. I wasn't being entirely honest with you. I wasn't really designing this based on Babylonian cuneiform. Uh, doesn't really interest me that much. But you know what does interest me? Chemistry. I wanted to make a chemistry-based script. And, starting from Babylonian cuneiform, well, really is a good way to do that. With all the triangles and lines. And, that tool. Uh, I mean, this is a tutorial after all. So, I hope you like this chemistry-based conscript. And, well, thank you for watching. If you want to see more Conlang videos, or want to hear about my own Conlang, leave me a comment below. Okay, thanks, bye.